How to travel cheap to Japan. I'm Chris, this is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining. And in this video, I'm gonna be giving you 10 money-saving tips so you can travel cheap to one of my favorite countries to travel, Japan. This is a live stream. If this is your first time on the live stream, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you're notified of future ones. If you're watching the archive, hit subscribe as well. I typically do these on Monday nights, so you'll get notifications on your mobile app and an email when I go live. Uh, and I'm also joined by Topher, my traveling panda right here. Also, there are 10 different tips. I'm going to be holding up these numbers and putting them right here in this hand so you will know what number I am on. Welcome to everybody who's on the live stream already. Kirk, Serena, and SoCal Seth, thanks for joining in. So let's start with number one. My first trip when you're traveling to Japan is to travel off peak. Uh, you know, the most popular time to travel to Japan, number one, cherry blossom season. It is absolutely my favorite time. The second most popular time is autumn foliage time. That's around mid-November. But I'll tell you, if you're going during cherry blossom time or autumn foliage time, it will be the most expensive time you could ever go to Japan. Not just because there's a lot of international and foreign visitors, but because that's when all the Japanese within Japan travel around to see the cherry blossom blossoms and admire the autumn leaves. So avoid April and November. You should also watch out for some Japan only holidays. A couple of these weeks are Golden Week and uh, one that they call Oban. Golden Week is April 29th to May 5th and Oban is around mid-August. And really during a lot of these holiday times, hotel prices can go up one, two, three hundred percent. I mean, hotel rates can be extremely crazy, particularly if you're going to Tokyo. So I would tell you, if you're planning a trip to Japan, before you lock in those flights, make sure to also check out what the hotel prices are gonna be. All right, my second tip for how to travel cheap to Japan is about airports and what airport you should fly into. And so my biggest tip here is going to be fly into some other airport other than Tokyo. Yes, Tokyo, it's certainly the biggest city, it's the capital, it's one of the places everybody wants to go, but Tokyo is mostly one of the most expensive places for you to fly into, particularly Narita. Uh, Osaka, another big city in Japan, one of the biggest flights into Osaka, often significantly less expensive than Tokyo. Uh, you could also fly into Nagoya. Nagoya has uh, even cheaper rates often than Tokyo or Osaka. And if you're headed to Japan for your first time or second time, you know, you can do a open jaw trip, fly into Osaka, fly out of Tokyo. Also, if you're looking at Tokyo, check out flights into Haneda, Haneda HND. Uh, it's the airport that's closer into the city. A lot of airlines have been flying new flights into Haneda, and so those services often aren't very busy. For our trip that we just took to Japan, um, what was it, just a couple months ago, we flew, we connected to San Francisco and we flew into Osaka. And our flight from San Francisco to Osaka was probably half empty because it's a new flight and they're really trying to increase that service. So look at those other airports. Uh, Mr. Pickles on Facebook is on board a Southwest Airlines flight coming back to San Diego. Thanks for joining Mr. Pickles. You get a thumbs up for watching this on an airplane. Paul Brown says, hi, Chris. Welcome, Paul. Uh, on YouTube, Jake McShane says, good evening, Eric. Hi, Tanner, hello. Uh, M. Claw, hello. David M. says, evening. Uh, and Kirk asked, when is the best time to see Godzilla? That is an excellent question. You're just going to have to probably be as good of a guess on that as mine. Uh, but I will say anytime you can go and see Godzilla at any of the anime or manga stores that are in Japan. Um, so one of the things that you know is often exciting on my live streams is what am I drinking? So today I've got a festive drink. Uh, and this is from 85 Degrees C. And it is a... Ice milk tea pudding latte. This drink, there's actually some pudding inside of it floating around. This is a Taiwanese drink, Taiwanese bakery. It's sealed on the top so you can take this to go. And of course, I have a fancy yellow straw to drink it with. To drink this, you slide this open, you take your pointy straw, and then you poke it right through here. Ah, and now it's open. And when I drink it, mmm it's pretty good. There's some pudding that comes up through that straw too. Mmm. All right, 
more on that to come a little later. Uh, all right. Uh, M. Claw says, uh, are the snacks expensive in Japan? M. Claw, we are going to be talking about food, and food is number 10. But I will say, I think snacks are pretty inexpensive in Japan. It's a pretty good thing. 7-Eleven, AM, PMs, Japanese convenience stores, epic there. Things definitely to die for, though. I always enjoy when I go there. Um, <coughs> Mark Haley says, thanks for the warnings about the busy season. SoCal Sess commented about hotel prices, saying he always checks them first, and that is a good idea. Um... Kirk says, I hear hotels in Fukushima are really cheap. Hotels in Fukushima are pretty cheap, too. Uh, and M. Kloss's green tea latte is the bomb. Uh, and SoCal Seth says, in Fukushima, they're going nuclear with their pricing. By the way, this little pointer I got here, we picked this up on our last trip to Japan. See, it's a great little kind of crab claw pointer. I mean, this is something that, like, everybody needs when they're doing a presentation, right? Isn't this great? Super great. All right, uh, so let's go to cheap travel tip number three. Uh, my third tip for traveling cheap to Japan is about getting to the city from the airport. It doesn't really matter what airport you're coming from. My biggest tip there is don't take a taxi. Actually, this applies to airports or in general. Taxis in Japan, really, really expensive. So if you want to save money, avoid taxis. And no Uber and Lyft and those sorts of things have not really made it to Japan yet. Um, taxis are fabulous, but a taxi, if you're flying into Tokyo Narita and you want to get into central Tokyo, that taxi ride is probably going to cost you about 200 US dollars. Yes, it's really that expensive. Uh, so some great options coming in from Narita into Tokyo. One is to take what's called the friendly limousine bus. Uh, the friendly limousine bus, they're these bright orange buses. They go to a number of different hotels. They often leave on 30 minute intervals from Narita uh, and a one way ride into the city costs about 3,000 yen or about 30 US dollars. Uh, you can also take what they call the Narita Express. Narita Express, it's a high speed train that goes in uh, to the city. That's about the same price as the friendly airport limousine bus. Basically your decision on whether to take the bus or the train is which one goes closer to your hotel. Uh, if you want to be really cheap and you're going into Tokyo, there's another train line that goes into uh, Narita Airport um, called the Keisei Line. That one is a bit slower, but it's cheaper. Uh, it's only 1,300 yen, or about $13 to get you from the airport into the city. You will find as we go through these travel tips that slower often equals cheaper. So if you don't need to go really fast and you're okay going slower in your transportation, well then you'll be able to get things for cheaper. Um, so let's see. Also, uh, coming from airports as a tourist, you can buy combination tickets. So as a tourist, you can buy this thing called like the NEX plus a Suica card. Um, they have similar combos in Osaka, where if you fly in for like 3,000 yen, you get the round trip into the city, you get money added on so that you can get subway tickets and things like that. Those are pretty good. Pan has a lot of really good ticket deals, particularly for international travelers, and you have to show your passport coming in to get these particular deals, so stay on the lookout for those. Um, Let's see. Tanner Wilson says, if you're looking for great sports experience tickets for J-League, top soccer league games aren't that expensive. Tanner, I've never been to see soccer in Japan, but that's pretty cool. I would also definitely recommend checking out a baseball game. Uh, if you're near Tokyo in Yokohama, the city right outside, it's like the Yokohama Bay Stars, seeing a Japanese baseball game, also not too expensive and a really interesting cultural experience. Um... And uh, Kirk says, uh, asked that question actually, he says, have you been to a Japanese baseball game? I hear it's insane. Really the most insane thing about a Japanese baseball game, it's not the baseball itself as much as it is the crowds. Like the crowds all get together and like unify in their chants. The fans, they'll bring their own instruments. They'll form their own bands. I mean, Japanese baseball games, they are really, they're really not like any other baseball game you've seen. Uh, Cause I find like American baseball, frankly, to be really boring. And the only reason to go is to like eat hot dogs at the stadium. Cause there's just not a lot of action between um, hits or pitches. But in Japan, there's a lot of stuff to see and experience in the stadium. Um, and uh, M. Claw says, where can you exchange money for a good price? Uh, that's going to be my bonus tip at the end, uh, but I'll tell you where I always exchange money from is from ATMs, and then I'll answer where as we get right after number 10. Um, so, 
Uh, let's see. Um, changing the subject. Hemi Design says uh, you're almost with 40,000 subscribers. Awesome. Thanks, Hemi Design. That is pretty awesome. Uh, Kirk says, what percentage of people in Japanese, what people, what percentage of people in Japanese speak English? I think you mean in Japan speak English in Tokyo. Is it hard to find people to help you? I will say, no, it's not. Uh, actually, Tokyo, I think you can get around pretty well as just an English speaker. Um, I don't speak very much Japanese. I can speak like basic food phrases in Japanese. Um, like if I'm thirsty and I want water, I can ask for mizu. I'm not sure how to ask for pudding tea latte. Mm. I can ask for gyoza, which are pot stickers, but I am not fluent in Japanese. Uh, so Tokyo, I'm gonna say you'll have no problem. People who work at the stores, all those sorts of things, speak uh, English pretty good. When you go outside of the major tourist cities, like we were just in Kyushu, then English um, starts to fall off a little bit. Actually, quite a bit. But the point and order method works. Uh, in Japan, they're much better than in France, where like in France, if you don't speak French, they can often be fairly rude about it, uh, where you'll go up to a place and say, oh, excuse me, do you speak English? And they'll just respond and go, no, and walk off. And you're like, but I'm in a bakery, and you probably think if I'm at the counter and I'm asking you that, I want to buy something. In Japan, they'll figure out a way to help you. Um, so I would not worry too much about that. Uh, on Facebook, Rally Blanchard says, you're cute. Uh, Topher's blushing. Uh, Anna Toy asks, is it possible to change reserve is it possible to change reserve train tickets if plane if plans change or you miss the train? Uh, Anna, I believe it is and uh but you have to make sure that you change it before because as soon as you take the train then or as soon as you miss the train then your ticket's pretty much worthless uh, but you can change it before if you need to um bobby wong uh, well anna also asks is there a free app that takes a picture of japanese text and translates it for you uh and bobby actually answered that and said google translate does that right google translate you can get it for android or iphone um, it might not work super well on Japanese, I'm not sure, but it does actually do a pretty good conversational mode. I had it used in a hotel with me where um, they wanted me to speak into it so that it could translate it to Japanese. So that's actually a pretty cool feature of Google Translate. Mclaw asks, when are cherry blossoms in bloom? That's a great question, Mclaw, and it, cha it depends on the part of the country. Typically, April is like the month for cherry blossoms, uh, but March to April, uh, and if you basically Google like cherry blossom bloom season or estimates, you can see where the cherry blossoms are expected to bloom north to south. Um, obviously, the cherry blossoms bloom sooner in the south than they do in the north, and they bloom in like February in Okinawa. Um, let's see. David M., I think to get my subscriber count up, says we should unsubscribe and then subscribe again. David, I, you know, I appreciate the thought, though actually YouTube uh, tracks minus subscribers as well in addition to pluses. So uh, 39,000 is the current count, and I will be pretty exciting when I reach 40,000. I thank you all who've subscribed, and I thank you all who've joined in here. It's super awesome. Mm -hmm. Anthony says Japan has a lot of signs in English, unlike China. That's very true. I believe in Japan, they like English. Like English is a thing that is cool. So businesses, restaurants use a lot of English because it's cool to use English. You'll see a lot of Japanese people wearing t-shirts that have English on them, even if maybe they don't exactly know what it means. Um, Kirk says, I hear they don't let foreigners in strip clubs, only Japanese allowed. Can you confirm? Uh, Kirk, I can neither confirm nor deny that about Japanese strip clubs, uh, but there are bars in general. You can walk through Japan and see bars that have signs that say um, no foreigners allowed. Uh, I don't know what's inside that bar because it has a sign that says no foreigners allowed. Uh, interestingly enough, while Japan is a very helpful country um, to foreigners, there are also certain establishments that can be not very friendly to foreigners, though those are few and far between, and if they're not that friendly, then you probably don't want to go there either. Uh, OC Girl points out that I should talk about the Tokyo Bond song. Uh, there's this song, uh, if you type in Japanglish, uh, when you're done watching my video, uh, Japanglish, and it's a video all about Japanglish. And so, in Japan, they have a lot of, they've, they've Japanized, japanese eyes a lot of English words. So McDonald's is like Makuro Donald, like it's not 
McDonald's. It's similar, but it's different. Uh, like, beer is biru, bus is basu. Uh, and so they might think they're speaking English because they think that's an English word, but you'll be listening to it finding it a little hard to decipher. So it will help if you're trying to communicate in Japanese to understand and learn a few of their Japanglish type words. Uh, and OC Girl put the link in there um, so you can click on that uh, as soon as you're done watching this live stream. Uh, and I think YouTube has this new feature for live streams that you should be able to go back and see all the comments from the live stream. Um, I think the last live stream I did was before they did this update. And so in that one, all the comments vanished afterwards, but now they should be here. So if you're watching the archive, that was posted in about 15 minutes. Um, Mm -hmm. So Calcet says, plastic food for the win. Yes, I should have brought up some plastic food, but this is certainly an example of one of the plastic food items for the win. Uh, and you can just point to plastic food. M. Claw asked, is it good to rent a car or just stay with public transport? It depends on what part of Japan you are going to. If you are going to Tokyo or if you're going to Osaka, don't bother with a car. Cars are useless in the big cities, completely useless in the big cities. Uh, if you're going to like the outskirts, um, like we were just in Kyushu, we rented a car uh, in Hokkaido, we rented a car. Hokkaido's the northern island where Sapporo is. Um, we went to this island that I can't remember the name of, but I'm going to talk about it in a little bit. Uh, we rented a car there. So if you're going into the countryside, I think renting a car is cool. Um, for most of the world, they drive on the, the wrong side. They drive on the British side of the road. For people from uh, the UK and from Australia, you'll be totally awesome with it. For the rest of us, it takes a little getting used to, but um, the Japanese drivers are very polite, uh, and so the highways things like that's easy to drive on. Yes, an OC girl said Shikoku. Shikoku is another island, great region to drive around. Um, uh, Dieter Hobson has joined in and says, Hi, Chris, from the land of the kangaroo. Dieter, thanks for joining from down under. I'm glad you're here. Um, M. Kloss says, Chick-fil-A is everywhere. I have not seen a Chick-fil-A in Tokyo. Maybe I haven't seen it. They've just opened Taco Bells in Tokyo, though. That is very interesting, uh, which is not Mexican food. It's definitely American food opened in Japan. Mm -hmm. Hemi Design says, The new Samsung Galaxy S9 has the feature of screening using the camera and translate any language in real time on your screen. Wow, that's cool. Hemi, have you tried it? Does it work well for Japanese? I found a lot of those apps just don't work well for Japanese. Kirk asks, have I ever purchased a mystery bag from a Japanese store? Those are fun unboxings. Kirk, I have not, but maybe next time I go to Japan, I will, because to your point, that would make a great unboxing video. Uh, and uh, for those who don't know, a lot of Japanese stores in places like Akihabara or things like that, they'll sell like a 1,000 yen or $10 bag of random items from their store. And it might be like $100 worth of merchandise that they just can't sell. They don't want to discount it. So they sell it in this mystery bag with a question mark on it. You get it and you can open it up later. Uh, Shogo says, you know very well about Japan. Thank you, Shogo. It's one of my favorite places to travel to. Uh, Kirk says, have you been to the Top Ramen Museum? Uh, what is it? The Cup of Noodle Museum that's out there. Yeah, so there's, there's, like, there's like two. Um... And they're both in Yokohama. There's like an international ramen museum, which has like a lot of ramen restaurants. It's near Shin Yokohama Station, which is the bullet station. I've been to that one. Uh, and that one's interesting because it's kind of like an eating experience. The other one is the Cup of Noodle Museum that you can make your own cup of custom cup of noodle. I have not been to that one in Yokohama, but I've seen plenty of people carrying around their custom cup of noodle that they make there. Um, so Cal Seth says, you have 72 hours in Tokyo. What is on your must-do list? Seth, that is a great question. I'm planning to do a video at some point about uh, my top things to do in Tokyo. But, um, you know, things I like to do on any trip. Number one, visit Harajuku and Shibuya. Shibuya has like the famous scramble crossing. Um, those are probably the two places that I go pretty much every time I go to Tokyo. Those are must-dos. I love the robot restaurant, which is in Shinjuku. Uh, I need to eat um, Pepper Lunch, one of my favorite restaurants in Japan. Uh, rotating sushi is pretty awesome, too. Um, if it's my first time in Japan or something like that, Tokyo Sky Tree is a really amazing attraction in Tokyo. Uh, and of course, visiting some of the toy shops in Tokyo to check out their latest things. Cruising through Ginza, the expensive department stores. Uh, and then if it's cherry blossom season, then I'd be heading over to the Imperial Palace in Tokyo for some of the great cherry blossoms that are there. <clears throat> 
Uh, Mclaw asks, how long is the flight um, from LA, from Los Angeles, direct flights into Tokyo are about 10 hours. Uh, obviously, it depends where you come from, but those are typically ours from here. Jake McShane says, you do a lot of videos about traveling cheap. Do you ever splurge when traveling? That's a great question, and uh, I think when we travel to Japan, we kind of waver back and forth between splurging and being cheap. And so being cheap on certain days allows us to splurge other days. Um, but I, I like... Maybe we don't splurge as much as some people do. Uh, obviously, if you've seen my videos about just how to travel cheap in general, you'll know that I use a lot of miles and points to book flights and hotels and things like that. This last trip to Japan, we stayed at some pretty fancy onsen hot spring hotels, um, which were maybe in the $500 a night price range, though those included dinner and things like that. Um, so, but then if we're having a cheap breakfast and a cheap lunch and those sorts of things, then it kind of evens out a little bit. But that's, uh, you know, we've never stayed at like any thousand dollar a night hotels mm -hmm. um puna heleny uh says did you do mount fuji i have not climbed mount fuji that's definitely on my bucket list uh that i want to do sometime in the future hemi design says looks like honolulu is very similar to japan well hemi design there are certainly a lot of japanese in honolulu there's a lot of japanese food japanese food in honolulu um, but the public transportation of Honolulu is definitely lacking as compared to Japan. So I would not say it is a lot like. Um, let's see. On Facebook, let me go to a couple comments here. Uh, Tanner says, if you want to see info on costs on Japanese sporting events, uh, there's a great link. Um, so you can check that out on the Facebook uh, live stream. Anna asks, is it better to watch your live streams on Facebook or YouTube? And I think it's better to watch them on YouTube, but I stream it in both places. Depends on where you prefer. Just the Facebook stream is like this kind of a stream and the YouTube stream is this one. So if, if you're on Facebook, you might not see Topher over here and you might not see the numbers that I have over here on the side. But if you're okay with that, then not a big deal. All right. Um, da, 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 da. Okay. Uh, let me go to number four and then I'll go back to some more questions. And I love all the questions, so totally keep the questions coming. This is great. It's more interesting to talk with you guys than it is just to talk with Topher and myself. I mean, we talk quite a bit, I have to say, often about the lack of bamboo or the quality of bamboo in certain places. Topher's really not keen when we go to Korean restaurants and he gets the, the stainless steel chopsticks instead of the bamboo ones. That is a real drag. All right, number four, about getting around, getting around the city. Um, so one of the best ways to get around in Japan is to take public transportation. By public transportation, I mean the trains and subway. Uh, in Tokyo, the subway rides start at 160 yen. That's like US $1.50. There's almost no reason not to take the subway. It is like... In a lot of cities like London, subways can be, you know, six or eight dollars a ride. No, no, no. Japan subways are really cheap. Many cities in Japan often sell day passes. You can get a day pass for the subway, uh, often between six to a thousand yen. Depends on the city how those run. Uh, also, if you're going to go to Japan for a while and ride a lot of trains, you should consider getting the JR pass, the Japan Railways pass. It is a basically all you can ride pass. The seven day pass costs. 29,000 yen, which is about $290. Um, the JR Pass, I get a lot of questions on and people ask, is it good for me? Is it good for this trip? Will it save me money? As a rule of thumb, if you are going Tokyo to Kyoto or Osaka round the trip, the JR Pass will save you money. If you're just flying into Tokyo and flying out of Osaka and you're only taking the bullet train one way, it will likely not save you money. So in that case, don't get the JR Pass. You can do the math. If you're taking again bullet trains a lot and long distances, JR Pass will be a great cost savings for you. We love the JR Pass. Uh, and so for like a price comparison, uh, if you're going Tokyo to Osaka, it's 14,000 yen. The JR Pass is 29,000, so 14,000 times two, 28,000, 29,000, you can get seven days all you can ride JR trains. Uh, and you should make sure if you're gonna get the JR Pass to buy them online, because they are cheaper if you buy them online, they're about 20% less online uh, than if you buy them in country. Uh, also, there's special JR passes for certain regions. The ones I just talked about, those are the JR passes for the whole country. But um, 
If you're going to like the Osaka Kyoto area, you can get what's called the Kansai Through Pass. It is a three day all you can ride pass, 5,200 yen for three days unlimited transportation or about 50 bucks. So that's great in the Osaka region. There's also this pass that not a lot of people know about. It's called the Seishun 18. If you're looking for the exact spelling, you can open up the description on this video. There's a lot of text in there, but in number four, it talks about the Seishun 18. <clears throat> it costs about 12,000 yen for five days and is unlimited rides on trains, everything except high speed rail. So it does not include um, the bullet trains or reserved seats, but it does include local rapid trains. Five days can be one person for five days or five people can split it up and use it all on the same day. But it's really cheap because then you can travel for only like 2,300 yen a day, $23 a day, unlimited travel. Great for college students, people on a budget, people backpacking, those sorts of things. Uh, Bobby Wong on Facebook says, Tokyo or Kyoto for cherry blossoms. Kyoto for cherry blossoms. Kyoto has really beautiful cherry blossoms. Tokyo, honestly, the cherry blossoms in the city, I don't think are that fabulous. Tokyo gets really busy and really overrun, so I would say Kyoto. But some of the best cherry blossoms are really out of the major developed areas and into the suburbs as well. And if you're going to Japan for cherry blossoms, I would say definitely get a JR pass and be prepared to travel because you'll want to take that some direction to go where the cherry blossoms are blooming. Okay, let's go to some more YouTube comments. <clears throat> okay, Kirk asks if I've ever, will I ever visit the suicide forest in Japan? I do not think I will because I don't think I want to get into all that YouTube drama about the suicide forest. Um, Kirk says, do they take all major credit cards like American Express there? Yes and no, Kirk. Uh, Japan is a very cash-based society. Um, I don't have my coin purse, but I bought a coin purse this last time in Japan because I literally use coins all the time. My pocket is full of coins. Many places in Japan only take cash. Um, and so the ones that do take credit cards, yes, they'll typically take all the major ones, uh, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, also JCB card. JCB card is the Japanese national credit card. Uh, it's unfortunately no longer issue JCB here, but JCB and Discover have a reciprocal agreement, so they often take Discover as well. A um, lot of, well, one way if you really don't want to use paper money, um, a lot of places also take the Oh, the card, the card, the, the, the train card, the reloadable IC card, the, right, the Suica card, right, the Suica card. You can use your Suica card to pay at vending machines. You can use your Suica card to pay at 7-Eleven. You can use Suica cards to pay almost anywhere. You have to load money on it first, and so it's not really a credit card. Uh, and credit cards definitely take longer. What's funny, though, is that there actually are some places like um, Yodobashi Camera that gives you a discount for using a credit card, which, like, is bizarre. It's like it flips my mind out because most places charge you more money for using a credit card, but there they give you a discount for using a credit card. I like to carry all three major cards because a lot of different attractions or different places um, will have different discounts on it. And Shogo Shibata says American Express is not that usable. It's true, American Express is not accepted as many places as Visa or MasterCard is, but I do find there are some places like Tokyo Skytree that will offer special discounts if you have an American Express card. Um, Coco uh, says, Tsukiji, um, what about Tsukiji, Coco? Kirk asks if I've ever stayed at a love hotel. I have not stayed at a love hotel. Um, we'll talk about, ho we'll talk about love hotels and hotels in the hotel section, which is one of these numbers. Kirk asks, are you allowed to smoke inside of restaurants in Japan? Um... Yes and no. Uh, there are some restaurants that you are, like izakayas and things like that, are often smoking, have smoking and non-smoking sections. Not all restaurants are smoking. That is one thing I kind of dislike uh, about Japan, is the smokiness of some of their restaurants. Uh, and they still do smoking, hotel rooms, and those sorts of things. There's a lot of smoke in Japan, though, though that is becoming less and less uh, as they're passing more no smoking regulations. Uh, Kirk asks, if I have a drone, I do not have a drone, Kirk. I've thought about buying one, but then there's all the drone restrictions and people get arrested and I don't really want to get arrested or fined when I'm on travel, so I haven't taken the bite on that one. 
Uh, M. Claw says, I ate eel at a Japanese restaurant in the U.S. Have you had eel? M. Claw, I've had eel. Unagi is what they call eel in Japanese. I love unagi. Uh, in a video that I'll be coming out probably the next couple weeks on Yanagawa, Japan, which is near uh, Fukuoka. It's in Kyushu. Um, the video is going to be titled Yanagawa, the Venice of Japan. They are famous for their eel in that town. Some of the most delicious eel I think I've ever had. Pretty good. So yes, I do like uh, Japanese eel. Uh, Bobby Wong on Facebook says, friend wants to go to Yo-Yogi Park. What do you think would like your opinion? Uh, Bobby, it's a, I mean, it's a park, you know? Um, what do they want to see in the park? What are they, what are they excited about the park? Uh, I think if, if my, strikes me correctly, that's the one near Shinjuku and Harajuku. I'm curious what they want to see. Um, I often find Japanese parks in general to be kind of meh, like the, there's no flowers, there's no beautiful things. You know, sometimes there's bamboo and maybe it's cool to walk through, but I wouldn't really spend like a whole day there. Yoyogi Park, like on Sundays, I think they're most famous for their like Elvis impersonators that meet up every Sunday or something like that. Uh, and I think there's like a temple in there. The temple's interesting to visit, but the park itself is probably kind of meh. Kirk says, would you recommend stopping in Hawaii to break up the long flight to Japan? Uh, Kirk, me personally, uh, I can do 10 hours from LA. It's not a big deal. Um, I don't really enjoy Honolulu Airport. Honolulu Airport is a pretty lame airport with not very good lounges and not very good restaurants. And so I don't find that to be a particularly good stopover. That's my opinion. I would just rather get to Japan uh, and be in an airport that is much better than the Honolulu Airport. Uh, Michael says, your Vegas videos were awesome. Japan and the Akihabara district, definitely on my to-do list. Thank you. Michael, thank you very much. And uh, let me know if you have any questions about Akihabara or anything like that in Japan. Always happy to answer. Kirk says, Andrew Snowden says that Facebook is spying on all of us. What do you think? Uh, Kirk, yeah, you know, Facebook, I mean, that, right, that's big conspiracy theory um, set up by the CIA. Now we just give them information that they'd have to you know, steal from us before. I mean, I don't, I don't think I really have anything that interesting. Frankly, my videos are public, so people can know whatever they want. I got nothing to hide. Um, so, uh, Gabriel says, I'm going to Vegas. Some advice. I'm from Mexico. Well, Gabriel, I have videos on Vegas. So if you've watched them, Cheap Eats in Vegas, 10 things to know before you go to Vegas. Uh, what are your questions? Otherwise, I could be here for the next 20 minutes telling you some great tips on Vegas. Uh, so ask, ask away. So Calset asked if I've ever been to a sumo event. Um, I have two yes answers to that. Yes, uh, Tofer, OC girl, myself, we went to see the sumo tournament when they came to Los Angeles a few years ago. It was super awesome. We really enjoyed it. I mean, like those dudes with their big bellies running at each other, they make a lot of noise in the stadium. They were at the LA Coliseum. Uh, and then in Japan, I've been to the sumo museum. They have like a sumo museum where they have pictures of the different sumo things. Uh, and so that's pretty cool. I would love to go again. Uh, it was it was neat. I like sumo. Um, Kirk says he still has $13 on his Taiwanese Metro card. Kirk, you got to go back to Taiwan. Spend it there. Uh, Damien says, I hear you can't eat on the train. Is that correct? Damien, that is incorrect. You can absolutely eat on the train in Japan. People eat on the train all the time. The trains that people would typically eat on would be like the longer distance trains, like the Shinkansen Express trains, trains that have like seats that are, you know, all facing one direction. You typically wouldn't see people eating on like the local trains, the subway, things that are really busy. Um... Oh, by the way, I've got this other other yellow cup right here, Starbucks, Starbucks yellow cup, and uh, another great anti-spill cup. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Um, OC girl uh, answers the cherry blossom thing and says Kyoto was really crowded too dur during cherry blossoms, um, which it was. Uh, but I think Kyoto's less crowded than Tokyo, but that's also why I say, if you're going to the cherry blossoms, get out from the city and um, get out to the suburbs where it's less crowded. One of our favorite cherry blossom trees was this tree called the Miharu Takizakura. It's like a thousand year old cherry blossom tree. Pretty amazing, but it was like an hour transportation outside of the big city. Um, Eva Hui says, I'm staying in Hakone 
Which hotel is the best location? I like the one with the private bath. Um, Eva, I don't know that I have a super good answer for you on that because most onsen hotels are kind of out of the way. Um, and so if you like ones with private bath, most onsen hotels don't have private baths. So you'll pretty much be um, only finding a few hotels that have that. TP Production says, I'm going to Hawaii on Sunday. Uh, excellent. That sounds good. Uh, Coco says, good place to visit Tsukiji. Uh, I will say, Tsukiji is a good place to visit. I think it's pretty neat. And it's going to be closing soon, so go there before they close it. All right, I'm going to move on to number five, and then I'll come back to more comments. So number five, tip number five right here uh, for traveling cheap to Japan. Well, I really could... Stand up there. All right, is to take the bus. Uh, so we've talked about train, subway, shinkansen, taxis, a walking, walking is free, but the bus, um, you know, this was this is a hard one for me. It's a it was a hard one for me to accept uh, because I come from Southern California, Los Angeles, the place of like the worst buses in the world. I mean, the bus nobody takes the bus here. If you're anybody, you do not take the bus in LA because the buses are awful and they smell and all sorts of things. But the buses in Japan, really actually quite nice. The bus drivers are polite. The bus drivers wear white gloves. Uh, and so the local buses in the city, those are pretty good. They're convenient. They come on time. They leave on time. But where you're really going to get the cheap savings is on long distance buses. Um, and in Japan, if you're going between cities, you can take an overnight bus. Uh, and it can save you quite a bit, particularly if you're someone who can sleep on a bus. These buses have like hoods that'll cover you up. They've got bathrooms on the bus. So if you're going Tokyo to Osaka on the bus, it's 10 hours, but it's 4,500 yen. So about $45. If you compare that to how much I said the Shinkansen was, the bullet train, 14,000 yen or $140. Bus, 4,500 yen. $45. So 30% of the price if you take the bus. And again, and if you can sleep, then you save yourself a night of hotel because you just sleep on the bus. Um, there's a bus company called Willer Express Bus. They offer a bus pass that's a 10,000 yen three trip pass and a 15,000 yen five trip pass. You can use them anytime um, within a two month window. So definitely consider the buses. Uh, and you'll, you'll say, well, if I take the bus, then how do I go take a shower? How do I do? Well, Japan has a lot of public bath houses uh, and you can visit a public bath house for about 500 yen or about $5 to take a public bath and a shower in a place that's usually typically pretty clean. Okay, number six, <clears throat> the sixth tip for traveling cheap to Japan is to bicycle. This is another mode of transportation and uh, riding the bicycle. Well, many cities have these metropolitan bicycle rental programs. Takamatsu is a great example. Takamatsu is one that I've got a video on it, renting a bicycle on Takamatsu. And in Takamatsu, you can rent bicycles for 200 yen a day. That is the equivalent of two US dollars. They've got these big underground garages that you can rent bikes, pretty amazing. Uh, in some of these cities, you can rent bikes for a whole month, 2,000 yen for a whole month. Uh, and so that is a amazing deal. And uh, one interesting thing about riding a bicycle in Japan is it's actually legal to ride your bicycle on the sidewalk. That's actually where they want you to ride it. Um, if you're from the US, then you'll know that people often ride their bikes uh, on the street, which I don't think is really safe because you know cars run into you. Uh, but uh, riding it on the sidewalk is pretty nice. And Japan has done a lot to really think about where to park bikes and how to take bikes over bridges and how to take bikes through underpasses and things like that. So take advantage of the really cheap metropolitan bicycle rental programs. Uh, and in Takamatsu, you know, I was like, I was amazed for like 200 yen and I just, I just walk away with this bike. It's amazing. I, I, I don't understand how they can afford it, but when it's a metropolitan thing and they do it a lot, then, then they can. I think they really want to encourage people to do it. That's why the cities subsidize it. Um, da, 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 da. Let's see, on Facebook, Bobby Wong says, where do you recommend seeing the cherry blossoms in Kyoto? My friend is going next week. 
I was thinking Yasaka Shrine. What do you think? Bobby, I have a, um, like I have a, if you look in my Japan playlist, I think I've got a separate one in Cherry Blossoms. I've got one from a shrine in Kyoto. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but there's, I've got two videos on Cherry Blossoms in Kyoto. So find that playlist and you'll see what they look like before you go. Uh, Melanie joins us. Oh man, I got here late, but I made it. Thanks for joining Melanie. And uh, Claire says, do you take your luggage with you when you take a bus? Claire, you can. Uh, the overnight buses will have places you can put your luggage underneath. Um, one great service that Japan has are these like luggage forwarding services. So if you're staying at one hotel, say in Tokyo, and you're going to Osaka later in the night, you can actually have your hotel basically ship your luggage to the next hotel that you're going to. Uh, and obviously it costs you a little more, but if you're gonna be out touristing the whole day, taking the cheaper methods of transportation, that's a pretty convenient luggage forwarding service to have. Uh, all right, let me go to some YouTube comments. Um, Kirk says, I hear Pokemon Go is still played quite a bit in Japan. I have seen people playing Pokemon. Just my last time in Osaka, I was in the store, people were playing it. Um, TP Production says, is there any videos about Hiroshima? I have not been to Hiroshima, TP Production, so there are no videos on Hiroshima. Kirk asks, have you been to an aquarium store in Japan? I hear they're on a whole different level. Hmm. I don't think I've been to an aquarium store in Japan. I've been to aquariums in Japan. This last trip to Osaka, I went to the Osaka Aquarium. I've been to the aquarium at the Tokyo Sky Tree. And just in general, the aquariums are on a whole different level. So uh, whether you like fish or not, I would definitely recommend checking out some of the aquariums. In Tokyo, the Tokyo Sky Tree one, in Osaka, it's called the Kayukon. It's near Universal Studios in Osaka. I don't usually love aquariums, but the Japanese aquariums, they're like, they're clean, the fish are amazingly bright, they're well lit, everything's designed so you can take pictures. Super neat. Mm. Kirk asked if I own a bonsai tree. I do not own a bonsai tree. I own um, a bird of paradise that's over there, uh, but no bonsai trees. Uh, Coco says, I understand Tsukiji's closing soon. It is, so head out there. Uh, SoCal Seth agrees with me that Honolulu is a bummer airport. Uh, Michael says, uh, Gabriel, definitely watch my Cheap Eats video in Vegas. Shake Shack for the win. Uh, Mclaw says, the Geisha photo opportunities. Where's the best place? Um, the Geishas in Kyoto, there's like this street. It's like an alley, and I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but there is this one street. If you just search for like Kyoto Geisha Street, um, you'll find the street that you'll often spot geishas. There really aren't that many geishas that walk around anymore in Kyoto. Probably most of the people you'll see dressed up as geishas are tourists that go to like a store to get a kimono and makeup to walk around. But hey, that's a great picture too. Um, the best day to see uh, people like in kimonos and things like that, the best time, if you go during cherry blossom season, you will see a lot of women wearing kimonos because they'll often do that to cherry blossom viewing parties. The men will often wear yukatas. Uh, and also there's a holiday in Japan called coming of age day every January. Uh, and everybody that turns 20, um, the girls wear kimonos, the men or boys wear suits. And so that's another day you'll see a lot of people in their traditional attire. Mm -hmm. Kirk says, chicken katsu versus pork katsu. Where do you stand? Pork katsu. That is where I stand for the win. Uh, um, Kirk says, I've seen video where the subway police push people in the subway with a stick. I want to see that. Kirk, you might want to see it. You probably don't want to be in that subway when they push you in with a stick. Tanner says, any important details yet on when they will start allowing people to book hotel rooms for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics? Tanner, I do not know. Um, we are likely going to be heading to Tokyo in 2020, but I'm not sure when they'll be opening for the Olympics booking. Sorry on that one. Uh, Jose says, sorry for my delay. Happy I made it. Sup, Topher. Jose says, sup. Thanks for joining. All right. Topher always loves the shout outs. Uh, Kirk says, do you see a lot of homeless in Japan? Yes and no. Uh, in Tokyo, there are a lot of homeless. You'll see them in the subways particularly the Shibuya subway, um, but they're not there all day, like they come at night. Uh, I will say the homeless in Japan are a lot better than the homeless in like Los Angeles, where I say the homeless in Los Angeles are like aggressive and things like that. The homeless in Japan pretty much stay to themselves. They go sleep in places that aren't super busy. You're not having to fall over them or trip over them, but they are there, um, which, 
maybe 10 years ago, I didn't see them as much, but lately I've been seeing more homeless in Japan. So they have those problems too. Brandon Torres joined in. Hello, Brandon. Thanks for joining. Michael says, is Akihabara pretty difficult to get to or should I stay at a hotel close to it? Tokyo looks too big and complex. I'd feel like I would get lost. Michael, one of the best things about getting to Akihabara, it is, it is on what is called the... Um, Tokyo Loop Line, the JR Loop Line. There's this loop line that makes a big circle around Tokyo, and Akihabara is one of the stops on that. I would suggest you get a hotel near the loop line, and then you can just get on that train and take it all the way to Akihabara. Pretty easy. The JR Loop Line is the one I recommend. If you're a tourist and it's your first time in Tokyo and you want it to be easy, just take the JR Loop Line. It'll take longer to go around because it goes in a circle around Tokyo, so you won't be navigating the subways intermixed, but Akihabara is easy to get to if you just do that. Um, so no, I don't think you need to stay there. Uh, the area that I recommend people stay in is Shinjuku. Shinjuku has a lot of hotels that aren't too expensive, reasonably priced. Um, yes, there was some pretty bad lag before. Sorry, Kirk, hopefully it should be better now. Kirk says, are there any casinos in Japan? Um, they're really big on, uh, what's it called? Da -da 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 -da. Pachinko, these little stainless steel balls that you put in these machines and go around. It's basically gambling. Gambling is illegal, but they have this thing where like, <clears throat> if you win a whole bunch of these balls, then you can take it to a window that's next to the pachinko parlor to exchange it for money. It's this whole elaborate scheme, but that's about as close as you get to casinos in Japan. So Calset says, from what I understand about Tsukiji, it's not closing, but moving, yes, it is moving. That's probably the right answer, but it won't be called Tsukiji because it'll be in a different place, I think. Alfredo says, Tokyo Disneyland or Tokyo Disney Sea. Tokyo Disney Sea. Uh, Tokyo Disney Sea because it's a unique theme park. There is no other theme park like Tokyo Disney Sea of any of the Disney theme parks. So if you want to go see the most unique thing, it's Tokyo Disney Sea. Uh, M. Klaus says, how are the public restrooms in Japan? They are excellent, except for the fact that there's never any paper towels. They do not have paper towels in public restrooms in Japan. They expect you to bring a handkerchief to wipe your own hands in. So just be aware of that. <laughs> Kirk says, where can I purchase ninja stars? You know, it's funny. When I was in Osaka on this last trip, there was actually this chain of souvenir stores selling like ninja related souvenirs. So you can find ninja stars, these like swords, ninja swords, nunchucks, all those kinds of things. Um, Lauren says, I'm wondering if it's acceptable to use a razor scooter on the sidewalk throughout Japan. I know there's a lot of walking in store for me. And I'd like to speed up. Lauren, I don't know that I have a good answer for you on that. Um, I think if you're, like, you can bicycle on the sidewalks, so I don't see why you couldn't ride a Razor scooter. Never seen anybody riding a Razor scooter, but I, I don't think that means you can't. I wouldn't ride them in the subway, and in Tokyo, where it's busy, that'll be difficult, but if you're in places that are less busy, I don't I don't see an issue. Uh, M. Claus is great info session, Chris and Topher. Thank you, M. Claw. Thanks for giving the shout out to Topher. Uh, Bobby says, did you ever try the noodles coming out the bamboo shoots north of Kyoto? It was fun, but I got the feeling that foreigners weren't welcome around there aside from that restaurant. Have you been? Bobby, I have not been. I'm not sure which restaurant that is. Um, okay, let's go to number seven, 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 seven. Number seven is about shopping. Uh, so, uh, Japan has a really great tax-free shopping program. Um, the tax rate in Japan currently is 10%, and they kind of have a national program where if you spend more than 5,000 yen at the same store, then you can get a refund for your tax at that store. 8% of it. They still keep 2% of your tax. And different stores apply it different ways. Sometimes they'll just refund it right there to you. Um, but a lot of times the way it works, they'll have a separate refund counter. So you'll pay full price for the merchandise and then you'll take it over to another counter where they'll give you money back. Uh, and when they give you the money, like if you can pay by credit card and they give you cash back, for the tax refund. It's slightly confusing because they separate what they call mm, I don't know, regular items versus consumables. So if you buy like shoes for 4,000 yen and then you buy some makeup for 1,000 yen, you can't get a tax refund. Um, 
You have to buy like over 5,000 yen of shoes or over 5,000 yen of consumables. If you buy the consumables, they put it in a special bag that you say, hey, you can't open this until you leave the country. Every time you get a tax refund, they staple the receipt to your passport. And then when you leave the country, theoretically, they could ask to see the receipts and ask to see the stuff. Though in practice, the last couple times we've left Japan, um, they just tell us to drop the receipts in a box and let us go through. Um, but I do like the fact that the tax-free is done at the store instead of at the airport. I really dislike tax-free refunds at the airports because those always end up with like long lines, you never have enough time, it's super stressful, so that's a great thing to do. So think about when you're calculating the price of things, um, the tax refund in there. Um, Shogo says eight, and maybe that's because Shogo, is it, the tax is 8% now, but it's going up to 10%. Um, so Cassette's duty-free is the way to be. Toe says, is hitchhiking a viable way to get around Japan cheaply? I don't think so, Toe. I don't think many people hitchhike in Japan. The public transportation is so good, I don't think a lot of people <coughs> have a need to hitchhike. Um, so Cassette says, would it be easy to buy stuff and just ship it back? Um, you could, but if you were doing the tax-free, then you're sort of somewhat obligated to show it at the airport if they ask you. So then if you ship it back, then you might not have it. Uh, if it's not tax-free, then sure, just ship it back. Um, we often buy things from Amazon. There's another tip. Uh, if it's too expensive at Yodobashi or things like that, you can buy things online at Amazon and have them shipped to your hotel. Many Japanese hotels will accept mail and packages for you. Uh, and uh, so you just have to be able to navigate the Japanese Amazon website, but you can use Google Translate to help you do that. Um, Kirk asks, is there Costco in Japan? Kirk, I, I've not been to Costco in Japan. I don't know. I haven't seen any. Did I? No, I haven't seen any Costco's in Japan. But somebody correct me if you've been to Costco in Japan. I've not seen them. Uh, and OC Girl says Amazon Japan has English, uh, which I don't think it always did, did it? But it does now. Uh, that's probably right. So you can use the English website. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lauren says there's a Costco in Hiroshima. All right, thank you. See, this is why I love doing the live streams because the collective knowledge of all of you on there is super awesome. Um, Claire says, can you tell us what's the cheapest time of year to fly to Japan? Um, I'm going to say the cheapest time to fly to Japan is January and February. And not like around New Year, but right after New Year's. January, February, early March cheapest time to fly to Japan because it's cold. Claire asked, what's there to buy on Amazon Japan? Everything. I mean, what's there not to buy on Amazon Japan? You want to buy a hairdryer? You want to buy a rice cooker? You want to buy electronics? I mean, that's usually the stuff we buy on Amazon Japan is electronics, though it actually, Amazon Japan does not have nearly as much stuff as Amazon US does, but they do have quite a few things that you'd be looking at. Um, okay. Let's go to number eight. Oh, actually one more about seven, shopping. Uh, definitely check out the 100 yen shops. Um, they're like the US dollar store, it's just way better. One of the biggest chains in Japan is called Daiso, D-A-I-S-O, Daiso. Uh, everything's 100 yen, and the products are actually good and pretty good quality. So if you're looking for cheap gifts, check out a 100 yen shop. All right, number eight, let's talk about hotels. Um, Great way to save money going to Japan is at hotels. Hotels is one. Is my eight upside down? My eight is totally upside down. Um, hotels do not have to be expensive in Japan. You know, you may have seen the movie Lost in Translation where Bill Murray stays at the Park Hyatt, which is $800 a night in Tokyo, which is crazy and insane, and nobody has to pay that much for a hotel. Um, Japan has a big chain of business hotels. One of the biggest discount business hotels is called Toyoko Inn. Toyoko Inn, the rooms are clean, they're quiet, uh, they're small, they're really small, but you can stay in central Tokyo at Toyoko Inn for 7,500 yen a night in Shinjuku. That's the exact price. I looked it up, which is the equivalent of about 70 US dollars. For 70 US dollars in the US, you get a Motel 6. You get a hotel that sucks. Toyoko Inn is a quite nice hotel. And actually really interesting, if you've never stayed at a Japanese business hotel, I'd encourage you to check one out. Uh, also, Japanese hotels often have promotions where you stay more nights, you get a discount. And if you book in advance, you get a discount. Typically, those will be 30 days in advance. And then the stay more nights is often three or more nights they'll have discounts. I've found long stay rates. Then you go to Tokyo, stay seven nights in Tokyo, you'll get, say, 30 or 40% off the room rate if you're staying that long. 
Um, Japan is famous for their capsule hotels. These are one that you just get a little bunk in a wall. Um, those can be 3,000 yen a night. Pretty cheap. It's like $28. Uh, sometimes they're only men. You'll have to, if you're a woman, you'll have to look for the ones that uh, allow women. If you really want to be cheap, you can stay in hostels. Japan has a lot of hostels, clean, safe. Uh, hostels run about $2,000 a night, about 18 US dollars. Um, some hostels, even in Tokyo, have these deals where if you are willing to clean the hostel, then they'll let you stay for free. If you clean for a few hours the next day after you wake up. Uh, we talked about love hotels earlier. Love hotels are certainly an option. They are about 8,000 yen a night. Love hotels are hotels that are designed for love and so they often run by the hour so you can book like a short stay for three hours or you can book an overnight stay eight thousand yen love hotels typically are set up where you don't actually have to see anybody to check in you go to this like window or a vending machine to book the room or things like that a lot of them in tokyo are in the shibuya district um but i wouldn't really recommend a love hotel because toyoko inn is cheaper um unless you just want a room that's like really themed because that's the big thing about Japanese love hotels is the theming of the rooms. And most of those hotels will have pictures out in front so you can see what the rooms look like that you're booking. Manga cafes, we're getting really cheap now. You wanna stay at a manga cafe. Manga cafes, they're basically places that you can get drinks and read comic books. And uh, they charge you to be in there for like by 30 minutes. So you want to go in the man cafe, 30 minutes, just a quick nap, that'll be 100 yen. You want to be there for three hours, 900 to 1500 yen. You want to be there seven to 12 hours, 1600 to 3000 yen. You typically get like a big comfy leather chair and you can just totally sleep in there. Um, or, you know, this is one where like, uh, if you go to McDonald's, in the morning or late at night, you will see people sleeping at McDonald's. Uh, and so that's just the price of a meal. <coughs> Put your head right down, go to sleep at McDonald's. It was funny, um, I went to Tokyo with my mom and we were staying in Shinjuku, and there was McDonald's that we'd go have breakfast at every day. And my mom was like, what are those people? Every time I go in here, there's no place to sit because everybody is asleep. And it was a true story. At like seven in the morning, there's a whole bunch of people sleeping because they were trying to take like the early trains in Tokyo because they're not packed. They go into McDonald's, try to get like an hour of sleep and then go into wherever the heck they have to go. Um, all right, Shogo says uh, tax rate is up to 10% October 2019. So that's where I got the eight and 10% confused. Um, Tanner says, any favorite Japanese ice cream flavors? Yes, matcha, green tea ice cream, uh, or Hokkaido milk. Hokkaido milk ice cream, really good flavor. Brandon says, $75 for a nice hotel is awesome. It is pretty awesome. Toe says, can you bargain at most stores? Japan doesn't really bargain, so no bargaining. Uh, Michael says, are Ryokans more expensive? Typically, yes. Uh, at least the nice ones are. Um, obviously, if you want to stay at one that like doesn't have its own bathroom and a shared bath and things like that, they can be less expensive. But typically, Ryokan's traditional Japanese inns have been more high-end. <laughs> um, OC Girl says, I have uh, stayed at Starbucks in Shinjuku at 3 a.m. waiting for the first train. So uh, there we go. Uh, that's another safe place to be. Uh, and cheap, just the price of a coffee. Hemi Design says, do people in Japan speak English? I don't think so, but I know Japanese people know how to write English in school. Very interesting. Yes, they are better at writing and reading and understanding than they are at speaking. Uh, and M classes are their public bathhouses. Absolutely, Japan has a lot of public bathhouses. You can go in for just 500 yen. Um, Bobby Wong says, I think there's a Costco in Yokohama, but it's out of the way. That's cool. If I go to Yokohama, I'll have to check that out again. Pauline says, hi, Chris. Sorry, going away from Japan. Can you suggest the best three to four star hotels in Waikiki going in November? Cheers from Brisbane. Pauline, here's my, um, I guess in that price range, uh, Marriott Waikiki, Sheraton Waikiki, Hilton Hawaiian Village, um, Hyatt, um, those would be my recommendations in Waikiki. There's also a Hyatt place, a courtyard, and embassy suites. Um, those are the ones I would stay at. I probably wouldn't stay at There's some local hotels in Waikiki, but, <clears throat> you know, the quality is hit or miss on those. Claire Lowe says, what if you bargain? Will they cringe? They probably just won't understand what you're doing, uh, or they'll just say, no, this is the price. 
All right, I'm coming up on the hour, and I like to hold these to an hour, so we're going to go to 9 and 10. So if you have any final questions, ask away, and I'll answer them rapid fire after I get through 9 and 10. All right, 9. 9 is about food. So people uh, often think going to Japan, food is really expensive. But let me tell you, it's really not. Food in Japan can be really cheap. If you haven't seen my Cheap Eats in Tokyo video, go check that out. Um, but uh, one of my favorite chains in Japan is a place called Osaka Osho. They're famous for their gyoza or their pot stickers. The thumbnail picture that I had for this particular live stream um, was eating at a chain fish izakaya restaurant. Uh, that bowl of fish was like a thousand yen, so like 10 US dollars. Um, Yoshinoya is famous for their beef bowls. They're like 500 yen. Moss Burger is famous for the burgers. Don't go to McDonald's. Don't go to Burger King. Go to the Japanese chain, Moss Burger. It's very interesting. Um, sushi at rotating sushi places can be cheap. You just have to make sure you go to a cheap one. If you want to eat at the high-end restaurants, eat there at lunch. Many high-end restaurants have lunch specials. And what's great about eating at sit-down restaurants is there's no tipping. There's no tipping in Japan at all. No tipping. I love it. I love it. Uh, eat at convenience stores. 7-Eleven, Lawson Station, Family Mart, AM, PM are famous for their fresh food. Yes, 7-Eleven is not in Japan is a completely different company than the US. Actually, it's the same company, but in Japan it's just way better. The food is delicious and it's cheap. It's brought in multiple times a day. Um, you can get bentos, which are box meals. You can get onigiri, which are rice balls, and inexpensive drinks. They have a great drink selection. Uh, go get the teas and the flavored drinks, things like that. Dollar, dollar fifty, pretty good. Uh, check out supermarkets. Supermarkets often are really good for cheap food. Uh, when we were in Kyushu this last time, we were staying at a Ryokan, which is a traditional Japanese onsen hotel. We didn't want to buy the $60 a person onsen dinner, so we went to the supermarket and picked up dinner for like eight bucks a person, uh, which included like fresh tuna and things like that from the seafood section, strawberries, all those sorts of really good things. Oh, but strawberries, that's what, <coughs> that's what killed our budget. Fresh fruit is really expensive. If you want to be cheap, avoid fresh fruit. Fresh fruit, fresh fruit, and really high-end sushi are the two most expensive things you can get in Japan. It's crazy. Uh, like you can get a watermelon for like 50 US dollars. It is insane. Um, so avoid fresh fruit. Also, department stores in the basement will often have food halls. And if you go to the food halls in the evening, they often mark down the prices of the food 30 to 50%. If you get there right as they're marking it down, then that'll be some really cheap eats. All right, number 10, attractions. Um, Japan's really big on these multi-attraction passes. So you can get like a pass to go into, um, you know, uh, the Tokyo Sky Tree and something else and something else. Like if you're going to three or four different attractions, take a look and see if there's a multi-attraction pass that will get you into all of them. And chances are it will be cheaper. And sometimes those attraction passes can also be combined with the transportation costs. So check out those. But if you want to be free instead of cheap, visit temples. Japan has a lot of temples. They're really interesting. Most of the temples in Japan are free. Some cost you money. If you go to Nikko or things like that, it's going to cost you. Also, a lot of tall buildings in Japan have free observation decks. In Shinjuku, there's this building called the Tokyo Metropolitan Government Building. It has a free view. Um, so check out these rooftop observation desks. Decks. Uh, and my... Final note, which is a bonus note, uh, and I was asked earlier about where's the best place to exchange money. It's from ATMs, always from an ATM, and at 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven will accept almost any international ATM card, and you get some of the best exchange rates there. Uh, Pauline says, thanks, Chris. Love your productions. Thanks, Pauline. Uh, Anna, do local tour guides accept tips? And typically people in Japan don't accept tips because they find tips rude. Um, there's a whole culture thing about tipping, they, why they don't do tipping, because it's like, I have money and you don't have money, so you need my pity, that's why I give you a tip, so they really don't accept tips. Uh, and they actually find it an insult if you're trying to tip them. Claire Lowe says, come to Taiwan, we have affordable, fresh, juicy fruit. I agree, I love the fruit in Taiwan, that's why it's often called the island of fruit. When I'm in Taiwan, I love the shiguatsu, or the watermelon juice. Mmm. Um... Okay, and we'll go to final YouTube comments. I'll run through all the questions, and then we will conclude. Um, OC Girl wanted to point out that she's heard a lot of problems with Airbnb and Ryokan in Japan, that most Airbnb are illegal, so be careful of Airbnb. 
Um, SoCal Seth says, I can understand sleeping at McDonald's after eating a Big Mac that can't be good for you. Yeah, it's probably not and you want to sleep. Kirk says, have you ever seen Yakuza Gangster in Japan? I'm going to answer yes. Uh, I've been places where you can definitely tell there are some girls on the street that are, say, for sale, if you know what I mean, for the evening. And then across the street will be a guy in a suit who's wearing sneakers because, you know, he needs to be able to run if he needs to. Um, Kirk says, do a vending machine video next time you go. I need to update that because that's an old one, old popular one, but I should redo it. So thanks for the reminder. Um, Subaru says, eat breakfast at 7-Eleven. That's cheap. That's a good price. Tanner says, price bargaining is more in China than Japan, which is very true. Brandon says, how often do you eat gyoza and sushi in Japan? As often as possible. If I'm there for a week, I probably have gyoza twice. Sushi, maybe the same. Um, rotating sushi. Um, Joe Blow says, Taco Bell. You could eat at Taco Bell, but I don't know why you'd want to. They do have locations in Japan now. Uh, Brandon says, I love 7-Eleven in the States. I bet I will like it way more in Japan. You will, Brandon. Only disappointment, no nachos or unlimited drink refills in Japan. So, mmm. David M says, I really wish we had Japanese 7-Elevens here. I do too. Lauren says, do you think I could bring fresh fruit through customs? I'd love to bring some cutie oranges. Great travel fruit. Lauren, I generally don't like to travel with fruit internationally. That's like fraught with peril, so I would suggest not. M. Claw says, do I have to remove, remove my shoes in certain places? Yes, Japan is big on removing your shoes. If you go to a lot of fancy restaurants, people's homes, temples, things like that, you have to remove your shoes. So be prepared to take off your shoes. Kirk says, do they have Panda Express in Japan? I have not seen Panda Express. Um, Michael says, does that giant Buddha in Nara cost to visit? Same with the deer park there. Um, I'm not sure about the giant Buddha in Nara. Um, there's a giant Buddha in, um, blah, where is it? Kamakura. The giant Buddha in Kamakura does have an admission fee. Uh, in Nara, the deer park is free. You just have to pay if you want to buy the senbei or the deer crackers. And so on the final notes, Kirk says, peace out. Tofer says, good night. Topher! That's so awesome that we have a Topher. Uh, says, good night, Topher. Good night, Topher. M. Claw, thanks. Uh, Mark Haley says, thanks for all the great info, Chris. Thought there weren't any cheap food options. Glad to know there are some authentic cheap eats in Japan. There certainly are, and they're really tasty. Michael says, great video. Brandon says, love Topher wearing the lei. Love the stream. Yes, he's got his Aloha Hawaiian lei on right here. Uh, Anna says, uh, thank you. Great videos leaving for Tokyo on Thursday. Anna, I hope this was just in time for you. Uh, and Bobby says, uh, Claire, why'd you bring up Taiwan? I miss eating at Ulao. All right. Aloha, everybody. Topher says, Aloha. Thanks for joining. The next live stream will be next Monday, seven days from today, Monday, March 26, 2018, 8 p.m. LA time. In this case, I'm going to talk about uh, my topic right now. It's what to pack for Japan. Unless you all have any ideas for other topics, let me know. I'm always looking for ideas for new topics, but that one I've got written. So if I don't have any other ideas, then that's what I'm going to be talking about. What to pack when you go to Japan. All right. See everybody next Monday. Bye-bye.